And yesterday, actually, yesterday, 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 I tried to figure out the name of uh, castors, and basically, I was occupying myself what this A at the second letter means. And then uh, Langeli was kind enough to explain to me that this is based. It's communication with base. It's B A for a B. And this reminded me of the high school teacher that I had in my high school for physics. So he was drawing uh, some something on the table and he uh, denoted a letter, so a point with letter T. Now T is tochka in Slovenian means point. So usually you put T. And a student, one colleague, so one friend of mine asked, what is this T, what is T? T as snow, so it's logical. I mean, and this is like A as B. So, okay, now I understand. Uh, okay, it's going to, the today talk is gonna be about DPD simulation. DPD stands for dissipative particle dynamics, simulation of ultrasound propagation through liquid water. And it's actually, I will stop. Uh, so I will, end it, I will end my presentation with this ultrasound uh, propagation uh, instead. And I will tell you the story, how you basically methodologically come into the position to, to simulate such, to perform such simulation uh, using all the arsenal of methods that actually I developed for the past 15 years. And, okay, now it doesn't work. Yeah. Okay. So uh, just to set the scene, uh, it's gonna, this presentation I will, in, uh, during this presentation, I will mention a lot of times open systems, open boundaries. And uh, here I will just define what I mean by that. So from the thermodynamic point of view, we can divide system into three, roughly three groups. In the first group, these are so-called isolated systems. Uh, we, these are the systems which they don't exchange uh, matter and energy with the surrounding. Then we, and the typical, this is actually typically in statistical mechanics, we, we treat such systems in microcanonical statistical ensembles. And this is a very natural ensemble for molecular dynamic simulation, which is actually the main method that I will present today. Uh, then we have closed systems, which they do exchange, they, they exchange energy with the surrounding, but they don't exchange any particles. So from the point of uh, simulation, that means that we are dealing with a constant number of particles. And this is in statistical mechanics, the, it's, if we are in equilibrium, uh, this corresponds to the canonical statistical ensemble, which is also a very natural ensemble to be uh, used in molecular dynamic simulations. Now, what I will speak about mostly today is open systems. And these systems actually exchange matter and energy with surrounding. And this means of course that the number of particles fluctuate. And that further means that typical ensemble actually used in statistical mechanics to, to describe such system is actually grand canonical ensemble. And this is not a very, so why, whereas this is a very common ensemble in Monte Carlo simulations, it's not very common in MD. And I will tell you why and uh, present your methodology, how to do that in MD. And this will then open doors for this ultrasound simulation that I was mentioning in the title. Okay, so this is the outline of my talk. It's gonna be about multi-scale simulation. In fact, I will start with presenting uh, a, a method that is basically on the, uh, underlies all our efforts here, which is an old method now. Uh, I developed it uh, at the Max Planck when while I was doing postdoc with Vangelis. So it's a called adaptive resolution scheme. And then I will present um, uh, another extension of, of this method, which is actually how to couple all atom simulation, all atom models with supramolecular coarse grain models. Supramolecular means that one coarse grain bit represents many molecules or many, many entities. It's not just one to one mapping, as we say in this, uh, in this uh, uh, field. 
And then uh, this will lead me then to this open boundary molecular dynamics. This is a methodology that allows to, to treat open systems using MD. Uh, the, and I will show all this method, uh, so uh, show, I will showcase the, the applications on, uh, of this methodology on biomolecular systems. Uh, this will be mostly DNA uh, systems, so the, the molecule, DNA molecules uh, solvated in some uh, salt solution. Uh, I will also touch upon uh, uh, liquid crystalline phases of such DNA molecules that actually you can find in viruses or in, the, uh, in, in our cells. And uh, okay, then of course I will present how this uh, this kind of systems can be also simulated in a ground canonical ensemble or and under any non-equilibrium conditions. And this, in the end, will then be the, the basis for my heresy, actually, is this ultrasound propagation of liquid water. So, okay, I said this is a multi-scale modeling talk. Uh, we focus on concurrent multi-scale methods. That means that we are combining different methods for different length scales uh, at the same time in the simulation. So here I'm representing basically this in this space diagram on the bottom here. You see it's a, it's a, it's a solvated protein in water, but uh, we use high resolution water. So atomistic representation of water only in the close vicinity of the protein molecule. This protein molecule is actually represented now in this cartoon representation, but it's all atom uh, model of protein and also water around is uh, no atom water because basically, usually, typically in all these uh, simulations, uh, we are focusing on the function and behavior of the biomolecules, but they are always somehow uh, solvated in water and water actually influences their function. So from the simulation point of view, we have to somehow treat the water. And by the way, water is also the treatment of water is the computationally most expensive part of such simulation. So basically, the idea is if you want to methodologically speed up uh, uh, molecular simulation like that, you have to uh, speed up some way now find a way how to speed up the solvent. So in this case, water. And we do this in our case that we treat water far away from the, the protein as a on a more coarse grain level. So using effective interactions, uh, omitting uh, explicit uh, electrostatic interaction and so on. And this way, actually, you see these uh, blue, blue beads represent uh, water. It can be one water molecule or many water molecules. So it depends on the, on the level of coarse grain. And uh, the, the water farther away just represents some, some kind of mass and energy buffer to the water, to the system around the, the protein. So you can go even further than that in this coarse graining game and you omit the particle based description. So you, you, this is in this middle, in this middle uh, figure. So here we are coupling particle based description of water, which is we go from atomistic through the coarse grain representation up to the computational fluid dynamics representation. So this is actually where we will solve the set of Newton equation of motion and solve Navier-Stokes equation of motion, and you solve everything on a grid. And here, this is much faster than an MD. So the idea is that in doing that, you basically really speed up your simulation as much as you can, but while not losing any details where they are needed. That's the idea, okay? And if you go even further up, you can do everything on the, uh, uh, on a, on a, a continuum level and use nanofluidic. So this is the area where my group is working from atomistic up to nanofluidic uh, uh, length scale. So let's say, and this is the phase diagram. Uh, as I said, so basically the talk is about molecular dynamic simulation. Molecular dynamic simulation is a very powerful method used in all this uh, bio and soft matter community uh, to treat uh, complex system. What you do is actually represent your, your system uh, using particles, atoms, molecules, or, or whatever. And then you 
compute the dynamics of such system by by uh, by 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 basically solving the Newton equation of motion for each particle in the system, and you get then a series of configurations and and velocities of your system, which is called trajectory, and then from this this series time series of configurations and velocities, you can then compute as time averages all the properties of the system, and if the system is ergodic, this corresponds to then to the averages uh, statistical. Uh, average, averages, let's say, computed by Monte Carlo or whatever. And of course, in this way, you basically get all the information of your system on the atomic scale. And this is really nice. But because these uh, biosystems are very complex, they involve a lot of numbers of particles, degrees of freedom. Typically, you run into problem that you cannot treat your, your you cannot simulate your system long enough or you don't you cannot treat large enough systems using this kind of accuracy. And then what you do is one way is basically to coarse grain a system so that you lump many particles into bits. And in this way, you reduce the number of particles, degrees of freedom, and you can then of course reach much longer uh, time scales and larger length scales. Okay, but uh, doing, while doing that, you will typically also lose atomistic uh, details of your system. This is the price you pay. Huh? And now, because you always treat accuracy versus speed up somehow. And uh, multi, the idea of multi scale simulation, of course, is that you would, you would take the advantage of both these kind of uh, approaches. So you would keep the accuracy, but also gain the speed up. And this is actually, it's a, not a general method. In, in, in coupling the coarse grain and atomistic level of details, you can think of it like a zoom, a zooming in and zooming out into your system. But this only works, of course, not it's not a gen, it's not a general prescription. So it's not like I'm not saying now that this is better than atomistic simulation. I'm just saying that for a certain type of system, like where you need uh, this high resolution only at some subdomain of your system, this is the way to go. Okay. In a bio, as I say, in bio system, this is typically, let's say, uh, around so a few solvation cell, cells of water around the biomolecules. There you need really high resolution because the chemistry and everything depends on the, this level of detail. And uh, further away, you can treat water uh, on a much lower solution using cheaper computation and cheaper models. And this then uh, guarantees you the speed up while not losing the accuracy. So that's the idea of all these uh, simulations. And we do that by doing this adaptive resolution scheme where we actually um, achieve this coupling between atomistic and uh, coarse grain uh, uh, models uh, using basically a simple uh, interpolation scheme uh, between atomistic and coarse grain forces. So you see that uh, here, we have a system of methane like molecules, and this is a homogeneous bulk liquid. The difference is just that we re represent this liquid in one, one part of the system uh, using all the full uh, atomistic details, whereas in this, uh, another part of the remainder of the system, we represent them using coarse grain models. So, in basically, here, one bit, this spherical molecule, represents the whole methane like molecule. And uh, now, these methane like molecules, they move freely. In the, in the box and they change resolution depending on their position in, in the box. So, and this is actually uh, described via this uh, uh, weighting function WV. And you can see that the WV1 corresponds to mystic description and um, WV, uh, the, the value zero corresponds to the coarse grain description. And the idea is just simple that if you are in the coarse grain part, the, the molecule, they will interact via the coarse grain potential if you are in the atomistic part, they will interact uh, atomistically. But then there is this hybrid region in between, which actually is there that, so that you smoothly switch from one description to the another. And this is there, the purpose is that it's not a problem to go in all these hybrid methods. Uh, it's not a problem to go from a high level resolution to low level resolution because you typically throw away some details or average out. Uh, the details, the problem is how to go from coarse grain description 
to the high level description because you have to reintroduce the missing details. And in our way, this is done via this weighting function going smoothly from zero to one. And in this way, you slowly turn on the atomistic. So basically, you, the point is that you see the atomistic molecule, it has three translational, uh, three rotational, and three n minus six. Uh, vibration degrees of freedom, while the coarse grain counterpart, it has only three translational degrees of freedom. So you have to reintroduce this rotational and vibrational degrees of freedom. Furthermore, it has the, the, the atomistic molecule has also a defined orientation in, in space, while this one does not have an orientation. So basically, what we do here is that when, when a molecule goes from the coarse grain part to the atomistic part of the box, we randomly orient these molecules, coarse grain molecules. And then we are this slowly turning on the uh, atomistic uh, interactions. The molecules find its proper orientation and so, and also it equilibrates its vibrational and uh, rotation degrees of freedom. We are the interacting with the surrounding molecules, and there are no overlaps at the beginning, even if they are the coarse grain uh, the atomistic interactions are turned off. So that then when while passing this hybrid region. When it, the molecule gets into the atomistic region, it has a proper orientation and it's fully equilibrated. So that's the idea. And then you see also there, here, this last part is this FTD. ED stands for thermodynamic force. And basically, the idea is that, of course, this, what we have here is now a homogeneous liquid, right? But from the technical point of view, we have two different models in the thermodynamic equilibrium. And there is no reason why they would have the same chemical potential. So if they, the two models, they don't have the uh, same chemical potential, then what happens is, the, 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 what it should happen basically is that the molecules, they go from the region with the lower, uh, uh, low, so the higher chemical potential to the region to the low of the lower chemical potential until this chemical potential density it equilibrates. But then the, the, the end, uh, end result is that the, the density is not homogeneous. But we want to have the same homogeneous met, uh, density because this is a liquid. So we have this thermodynamical force. It is actually a negative gradient of the chemical potential density. And it basically takes care of this different chemical potential of the models so that you have that everything in the thermodynamical equilibrium. In the end, the same constant density. Now. This actually allows you to then map, uh, no map, uh, to couple different kind of models. They don't need to be really, these coarse grain models, they don't need to be perfect. Or even you, if you can couple two atomistic models, different models, let's say P3P water with SPC water, if you want to do that. So it allows you to couple really different things. And while, well, how you use this method then, of course you can, Simulate, let's say, a DNA, so DNA molecule solvated in a in a, in a salt solution. So basically, here we use a cylindrical geometry between the domains. You can you are very flexible. This they can be the different. So they can be a cylindrical, spherical, flat. They can even adapt. So they can change via time. Uh, but uh, the idea is that the solvent then moves. You see these gray balls are basically representing one water molecule. And the ions, since they are uh, sodium chloride, they are one, one particle entities, they don't change the resolution, but they, what they change is actually electrostatic interaction. So in the coarse grain part, you have a dielectric concept of 80, while in the atomistic part, water has a, so you're using the electric concept of one because the interaction water do that. So there, the interactions in the, in the coarse grain regime, they are screened. And this is the, uh, the blue entity in the, in, in the center of the simulation box is basically a atomistic B at DNA molecule, one pitch so that we have a periodic boundary condition. So the upper part of the DNA molecule sees the lower part. And in this way, you are, we are effectively simulating an infinitely long rod. We are omitting the bending modes. Okay, this is the price space. And then, of course, this is an MD simulation. As I said, you can then get the trajectory and uh, you can compute different, uh, different, different uh, 
quantities. One is, let's say, directly constant of different parts of a DNA molecule. Now in the bracket, what you can do with this kind of uh, setup, you can change the radius of the atomistic region. So you can see, you, you, you have to always, this multi scale methods, hybrid methods, you have to compare with the reference data, which is the all atom simulation. So you would need to have, like you would have this all atom high resolution in the entire box. So this is actually this uh, infinitely, infinite there. It's not a frequency, it's basically it corresponds to all atom simulation. This is the reference value. And then you can see how fast you, how, how large, uh, atomistic domain you have to have in order that you reproduce faithfully the all atom uh, simulation. And uh, the, the idea here is actually that atomistic, uh, uh, so for water, that means actually something really nice. Water forms um, uh, hydrogen bond networks. And you can see how, how far away these hydrogen networks actually influence the property of the biomolecule. Because the coarse gain model does not have any electrostatics no hydrogen bond it's just an effective interaction between the the water molecules so to reduce the geopower for example yeah. 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 well here it's we took a very nice a very big so i would say uh, i don't know you cannot <laughs> yeah, it's not really monotonic because uh, actually it's uh Fluctuations. Yeah. So this was this is a no. This is two thousand fifteen, and uh, we didn't have a, a very efficient code. So no, basically we run on one uh, at least uh, on uh, sixteen nodes. So it was just yeah yeah. Okay, so you can see also you can uh, now you can also compute the the, the property of, of the solvent and. Uh, so we have to actually see that uh, the DNA presence of DNA molecule in, uh, in such a solvent influences the dielectric constant of water. So in bulk, the dielectric constant of water is approximately 80. Now you see that in the vicinity of the DNA molecule, you can get much, uh, uh, so it goes from zero to a certain value. The red, the red curve is actually the reference value. And now you see that here, all these multi-scale uh, results go somehow there down to zero. I mean, whatever, down there. And this is the influence, as I said, multi-scale is not general. So uh, the, the, the water molecule in the coarse grain part does not have any dipole. So you cannot compute dielectric constant with the coarse grain water model. And this is not correct. So this data there, and also it doesn't have any rotation degrees of freedom. So it's basically, a frozen molecule in regard to rotation. So this why that's why the dielectric constant goes down. But what is important is that at the vicinity of the DNA molecule, where you have the atomistic resolution, you get the right result. And this is actually the condition that you have to satisfy with these multi-scale methods. It's a little bit different one than in coarse graining. In coarse graining, you are running your all atom simulation then you compute the coarse grain properties by just using the coarse grain bead uh, sites in your all atom simulation, which you can do because you have them. And then the, the properties from the coarse grain simulation and, uh, and this uh, 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 results from all atom simulation on the coarse grain level have to be the same. This is not the same here in multi-scale. In multi-scale you want that in the Subdomain in the atomistic subdomain of your multi scale simulation, you get the same results as you get in the all atom part of the, in, in the all atom simulation. So, but on the all atom level, not on the coarse grain level. So, that's why it's important that you get the right result there. Yeah, but okay, so we are taking a atomistic as a reference. Yeah. Yeah. The number and parentheses are this uh, radius of atomistic region. Yeah. Infinitely, infinite means uh, all atoms, just the designation. We will see something like that later on. 
just we come there. So that's why I say I'm telling you the story. Okay, so here we have one uh, molecule and uh, and solvent. Now we wanted to also actually uh, study the phase transition of uh, DNA liquid DNA uh, spaces. Li no, DNA liquid crystalline phases in 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 the in the cells. So in the nuclei of the cell, which takes place, or or in uh, viruses. So the DNA is really densely packed. You know that the DNA molecule is two meter long. And now how you pack it down there in the nuclei, then it's very, very densely packed and actually forms really liquid, liquid crystalline phases. So, so it's from isotropic, depending on the concentration, it goes through several different uh, phases up to autoromic. So we were also focusing on this hexagonal and autoromic phase, actually. And uh, so this was our system down there. Now, the first idea was actually to, to have this, uh, like in the first slide, as I saw with one, that you will have a domestic resolution around each of them and then in between you have cold grain. But this is a system now so dense, in fact, that there is simply not enough space to have this different uh, level of resolution. So, what we had in the end was just these blue circles are the DNA molecules pointing towards you, it's a top down view, uh, yeah. and they are in this uh, hexagonal or orthoromic phase. And you have then a uh, uh, semi permeable membrane surrounding uh, uh, this all atom solvent, which is the uh, salt. Uh, I will tell you later. And then you have this cold grain resolution outside. Now uh, we want to study uh, the phase, uh, phase um, uh, transitions using the, we wanted to uh, have an equation of state of osmotic pressure. Osmotic pressure is a little bit different than. Standard pressure that you calculate in uh, in MD. Standard to co compute standard pressure, it's very simple because you just use the virials and you have the forces, so you get it for free. Now here, osmotic pressure you compute basically its interaction of the DNA molecules with the uh, with this semi permeable membrane, which is basically defined as a Lena Jones interaction integrated over the surface. So it's like this Hamaker uh, kind of approach. And um, by measuring this force, this interaction, then you get the, the value of, uh, you have to divide it by the surface and you get the value of uh, pressure, osmotic pressure, okay? Just in a uh, uh, remark. And then you get this uh, basic equation of states, pressure versus uh, concentration of DNA. Now here I have to say, so DNA molecule is very electrostatically charged, negatively charged molecule. So as I Sorry, uh, uh, sorry to interrupt. It's just uh, the audio has gone uh, a little bit bad. Oh, sorry, sorry. Okay, okay it's thanks. better now. Yes, I'm yes, much the, better. The, 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 the reason why we don't get uh, the uh, the condensation or the interaction between DNA molecules in this case is not uh, because it's anything wrong with our simulation. It's just the force field. So the atomistic force field is not accurate enough to get this effect because this is a very special system and it was never really tested. 
on such systems. Okay, but this is down to force field development. Attraction, yeah. So if you use the spermidine ions, you should get attraction because this is why you have this uh, liquid crystalline phases in your nuclei. Otherwise, they would not be stable. Otherwise, everything would be spoiled. Yeah. We, we, we would be we very, <laughs> very weird uh, system. So you can, of course, uh, calculate all these different uh, order correlations, positional uh, orientation and correlation. Actually, we use them as a uh, Basically, to study phase transition, we should use something like metadynamics or free energy methods, but this was too expensive for us. Was we took actually this Lindemann uh, experimental criterion, which says that you have to measure your correlation, and if they go be, uh, above a certain threshold of 0.1, this is the point of the phase transition, actually. And we, we took, if you see, I'm oh, sorry. So basically here is the point of the phase transition and actually it corresponds to the experimental value, but this is just a, a density. So we started different, uh, different systems. Yeah. I will show you later on a method that you can do this in one simulation. So here we just had many different uh, simulation setups with different configurations. Okay, and this is another way of presenting stuff. So on the gray, you see two neighboring DNA molecules and how they influence the neighboring solvent. So everything is now normalized to be on the same picture. Red color means high concentration, uh, purple means low concentration. And you see that if, you, uh, you, if the DNA is highly concentrated, it influences the neighboring solvent to a greater extent, which you would expect. Okay, so now, what I presented is this coupling that one bead, force grain bead represented one water molecules. Now, water molecules, as I said, it forms that, uh, uh, so hydrogen bond networks, which are tetrahedral. So Martini force field is one of the very common use. Force field takes this advantage. And basically there we have a mapping that one coarse grain bead represents four heavy atoms. So in for water, it means one force grain water it represents four water, uh, all atom waters. So if you had this uh, higher level of coarse graining, supramolecular coarse graining, you could basically gain a larger speed up. It's very logical. And uh, a part of that, you could also then use this uh, uh, supramolecular coarse grain models like Martini, which is the most standard coarse grain model in, uh, in biosimulation, uh, which is already used, so uh, derived for you. Now, the, the, the idea is that why would you then use this uh, also multi scale? So, here we were collaborating with Stuart Malin, who is uh, uh, the main guy behind this Martini. Uh, why do we want to have this coupling to all atoms? The core, so the Martini force field is derived, as I said, coarse graining. I will not go into that, but uh, Vangelis knows uh, uh, this as much as me or even more. So, basically, we can do this coarse graining on different, in different ways. It can be uh, basically you want to match structure or you want to make match thermodynamics. So Martini matches thermodynamics, and while matching the thermodynamics, it's not very good in uh, in structure. So if you need to, to have a let's say a lipid bilayer and you want to have a certain ion channel or protein there, you want to have there at the uh, interaction. If you want to have the chemical specificity, you want to sometimes really want to have the right structure, and it's nice then to switch. To atomistic model there on this small uh, uh, domain because with the atomistic model you would get the right structure instead of using Martini description. So the idea was how to match the atomistic and Martini description. So in this case, uh, yeah, okay, so you can use either the Martini or you can go to even another uh, of this uh, supramolecular model which is this DPD, dissipated particle dynamics model, which is basically a mesoscopic variant of uh, MD. You are just solving MD equations, but for a very specific uh, potential. And the idea is that you basically reproduce all the Navier-Stokes continuum fluid dynamics, hydrodynamics using the MD particle-based like method. This is DPD. Now, 
to do that this one to one mapping we had to actually uh, argue, uh, add to the address also this redistribution algorithm swinger because basically as i told you so the water mole uh, so water does this hydrogen bonding and basically you have tetrahedral structure and you have it's very natural that you have these four molecules there or even five i would say uh, but um, the problem is that these hydrogen bond, uh, bonds are very long, short time lived. So basically they're on picosecond time scale and then they form and reform and so on. So if the, at certain point there are some four molecules close to each other, that doesn't mean that they are after some time that they are still close to each other. So, but to have this uh, uh, coarse grain uh, switching that, uh, and all atom switching uh, in place, they have to be close together. So what we do is actually we have we on the fly we redistribute molecules into the coarse grain beads according to their positions. So this is just a very it's a very simple uh, algorithm that you can do every thousand times step of MD simulation. It's basically for free. Uh, it, this is the algorithm which allows. Yes, it's somehow related, but I'm telling you in practice means that you can update it every parallel time update. So it's like that. Uh, and it's at, it represents, if I'm not mistaken, a few percent of the time that in space are possible. So we do it every time. Basically, it's virtual or free. Uh, and then you can use this coupling then between uh, atomistic and DPD. Okay, and now DPD, what is DPD is written here. So MD is just, as I said, you solve Newton equation of motion, you get forces as a negative derivative of potential. A DPD is basically consists of three terms. These forces are consisting of three terms. The R is random, E is dissipative, and this is basically the second and the third term are representing a thermostat terms so that you can simulate uh, your system at the constant temperature, they satisfy the, they satisfy the fluctuation dissipation theorem. Uh, while the first term is this conservative force, this is your force field. And for the DPD, this means uh, repulsive, linear repulsive term. And this does, you just have to imagine your bit now represents a chunk of water. And this chunk of water, it means it's up to you how much it represents. So you, as a user, you define when you do this, uh, everything is in uh, dimensionless units, but when you do this mapping between the real units and the dimensionless, you basically specify what your length scale is. And that, that means how much, how many molecules one DPD bit represents. Now, if you want to have this mapping with the all atom, you cannot go for DPD itself. If you just use DPD, it can, you can also say oh, one bit represents uh, Avogadro number of molecules. And you will get, the result will be that you will have a continuum solvent. So particle based, uh, uh, particle in, uh, derived in a particle based way, but it will be a continuum fluid dynamic. Now, if you want to have this connection to chemistry, so to still to structure, you cannot go to, the, you cannot say that one bit represents Avogadro number. It, can, it turns out that it can go, this is done, uh, this simulation was done, actually study was done by George Kamiyazaki's group. It can go up to 30 molecules somehow. Yeah, yeah it's, uh, no, no, you don't, you don't have, yeah. This is not the machine, no, this is DPD. Yeah, it's an effective. Because the structure is not correct, but that's what I'm saying. I'm, I will, exactly, but I will not use it for, the, for doing statistic mechanics with that. I will use it here for a buffer and flow. Yeah, you have to have, because you have to have this mapping. So you. Yeah, yeah, no, but in, in simulation, if you want to couple MD with the DPD water, when you go from the DPD description to MD, you have to specify how many molecules you will put there. So here you have to have uh, an exact number. Yeah. 
So because, but as I said, you are concerned that the statistical and, uh, mechanics and all in uh, is correct in your atomistic. Yes, let's put it in this way, right? And then what is needed is actually the DPD, as I said, it's about uh, uh, reproducing via the mesoscopy. It's a mesoscopic model, particle-based model that in the continuum limit reproduces continuum hydrodynamics. So what the, now continuum hydrodynamics is all about the uh, proper propagation of linear momentum through the liquid, which is actually guaranteed by Navier-Stokes equation because they are linear momentum preserving. And what we show here is basically that the local linear momentum is preserved up to the accuracy. So all these couplings, because address it's uh, uh, MD method that uh, uh, satisfies certain you know. DPD is also a method that by construction, it preserves linear momentum. So also the combination preserves linear momentum. Okay, and then you can go even further up and couple all this particle description with continuum fluid dynamics, as I show on this left plot, where you uh, couple the MD description of liquid with continuum fluid dynamics, Navier-Stokes. Now, as I said, Navier-Stokes and MD are very natural combination because Navier-Stokes is a mesoscopic uh, counterpart of the Newton law. This is what you do. And then uh, while doing that, you can then study, let's say, targeted drug liver, the targeted drug delivery, like, okay, there is a, something that we did with Petros Komotakos like 10 years ago. We were studying uh, water flow past the buckyball. So buckyball was like a, a carrier where you put some drug in and you, you carry it to the uh, desired place in your body, like uh, cancer, tumor, or something. Now, buckyball is not the best example because it's poisonous. Okay, the idea was just to take a nano particle where you put something in. And now the, why, why, why this coupling, you can see the here, the coupling between atomistic and spherical atomistic region and then a continuum fluid dynamic region. Uh, why we need such a coupling is because the, unlike, unlike in the macro world, so the continuum fluid dynamic, basically the methods is a partial a differential equation, you need boundary conditions. So you need boundary condition at the solid and or molecule and, 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 and the solvent uh, uh, contact. Now for colloids or macro molecule, uh, macro body, this uh, part of this uh, boundary condition is no, it's no skip boundary condition. So the relative velocity is zero. While, while in the this nano world, this is no longer true. So you have a partial slip. So we need a concept of, well, you need actually one parameter. You need slip length that defines your partial slip. And well, how you get it, you get it so that you use a more accurate method, which is MD. So you get it from MD and MD provides the boundary condition then that for your computational fluid dynamics description. Okay, but in this case, you then get all the, you can then, of course, computational fluid dynamics is much cheaper method, like 100 times cheaper than MD. And then, of course, we will really simulate part of the system for longer time scale. So now, but if you're just focusing on the, on the particle-based part of this system, so you see here, what we are doing is, as I said, we are satisfying the linear momentum preservation. So we are satisfying the flux exchange between the both descriptions. That's what we do. And by that, doing that, we basically change the number of mass in the, in the particle uh, part of the system. So we are changing the number of particles in the particle-based part of our system. So this opens actually the door to this open boundary dynamics. So here we have a start polymer melt. And I said, uh, okay, these different colors are start polymer, okay? And our cross gain, we describe our cross gain model of a start polymer is basically just a board. The very with the, very soft potential, deposit potential. Now, as I said, this, the region of interest actually changes now the, the, the number of particles. We are the ground canonical ensemble description. Now, why this was not used in MD? So they were attempts to do it, uh, but they were all done on the nanogram system. 
So if you go to more complex circuits, you will not find a, a MD uh, or Ranconometer simulation. And the reason is that, as I say, these are very dense liquids. If you want to put, so if you want to change the number of particles in, in such a liquid, you, you have to either delete them, which is not a problem, or add them. Now to add, this is the problem. This was very technical reason. So you have to add a, a molecule into a dense liquid. And this happens, that how can you do that? Of course, there can be some voids, temporal voids in the liquid, and if you're lucky, you're just fine. But if you have a poly, uh, polymer melt, this is impossible. So if you would like to insert uh, this guy here into, the, uh, into this liquid, you will wait for a long time. And, and here, here you have to do it all the time. But we, how we solve the problem is with using this cold grain chip, because in our cold grain models, they can overlap. So you can easily insert your soft uh, star polymer in the coarse grain parts, of, which we call buffer, which are like the mud reservoirs for our region of interest. And then while they go, they move to the region of interest, they acquire all the degrees of freedom using address. So using address here is just uh, uh, a tool how to insert molecule into the dense liquid. In this, sense, in this way, we actually solve the problem of run canonical MD. This is, no, this is a, uh, it's a uh, bit, uh, bit screen model. So I'm talking about emitted by this fine grain structure. So this is the method, it's based on flux exchanges. I know not going into, into that, but this is actually allows you to do run canonical MD simulation if you are in equilibrium. But it also allows you to actually go beyond the equilibrium and prescribe any boundary condition instead of the uh, periodic boundary conditions that are used in the perpendicular direction. So in the X direction here, we don't have periodic boundary conditions that are typically used in MD in order to mimic infinitely large systems. Here we open up the system. And now here we can manipulate the boundaries. It can be also done in three, three, all three ways, but it's just in one direction here. And we, we manipulate system like in an experiment here on the outside. So we can do different kind of uh, boundary condition, not only periodic boundary. And in this way, we can induce any kind of growth and energy. The important thing is, is uh, here is that we don't change the equation of motion uh, inside of the uh, region of interest. I was here also when Brad Gellis, we were in Rodos uh, many years ago, and there was a big discussion in this community of polymer simulators, how to do the non-equilibrium MD. <laughs> And because why? Because they typically induce uh, uh, these flows or shear using extra terms in the in, in equation of motion. And now that in this extra term, they actually drive the system into the stationary point. Here we don't do that. We don't change the equation of motion in the system, and we don't need to know that what is the stationary point. So if you want to drive it to the stationary point, you need to know what the stationary point is in advance in the other non-equilibrium MD like slot doors and blah, blah, blah. So here we don't do, we don't need to do that. So we are much more free to what we can do with the system. We can manipulate it in any way. And we, it will go and relax into the stationary point whenever it's gonna be. Or is it uh, not? But it's just, here we are like in an experiment. We are more free to do a lot of things to the system. One, one way how to use this methodology is actually to go, I started with this uh, uh, system, so DNA molecules in the salt solution. Now here for the coarse grain water, we take uh, uh, the most cheap, apart from particle, so ideal gas, it's implicit water model. So we have just dielectric constant. And now we have iron. So the, what is the problem? So you typically, what I showed, uh, all the simulation that I showed at the beginning were done in one molar salt solution. One molar is, so the physiological concentration is 0.157. So it's like almost 10 times uh, higher. So, and all the simulation are done typically in, at one molar. And the reason is, as I, saw, as I told you, the most expensive part is the simulation of thorium. Now, if you want to have a, 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 some acceptable number of statistical number of ions to be statistically acceptable, that means that you have to have a large system. That means that because the concentration, physiological concentration is so low, 
that means a lot of number of water molecules. That means it's very computationally expensive. So, and that's why they use, instead of physiological filtration, they use rather high concentration of one molar. Now, in this case, if you use implicit uh, uh, a solvent, you basically, uh, you just add ions and nothing more. And then use open boundaries to simulate, because you have to, of course, the number of uh, water molecules in the vicinity of the DNA uh, molecule fluctuates, and the technique to do this is this open boundary of the lattice dynamics, and you get to the same accuracy, uh, and actually at the same speed, you can simulate this now with any concentration of water of salt solution that you'd like with uh, the same computational process. That's the idea. Okay. And yeah, okay, you can see here uh, the, uh, the, the, the density profile from the side, so of course it, uh, you don't have any uh, water in the salt grain region. You just have the ions, and but you can see here that when you have this charge compensation, that it's not the same as you, in, uh, the charge is not compensated in the same way if you have one molar solution or, or physiological. So in principle, you should, if you want to have a physiological condition, you should simulate your system at physiological condition. So in our with our method, you can do that the same computational process as for the one molar, which allows you to do proper biosimulation. So as I said, uh, uh, now I come to the to this uh, ultrasound. So this is a BPD water. You can, as I said, with open boundary, you can do any boundary condition that you want. So in our case, we just uh, perturb the system with this uh, uh, periodical perturbation, which is actually ultrasound is everything, the sound beyond 20,000 hertz. So everything above it, is 20, uh, it's actually ultrasound. And then what we did is actually, we, uh, we, we, we actually, uh, uh, as I said, BPD could give you the fluctuating hydrodynamic limit. And in our case, we studied it, this, uh, this could reproduce the ultrasound using quantum phase description to the BPD water. Now, the thing is here, as I said, uh, if uh, ultrasound is everything about 10,000, so very large range, what is ultrasound. And the idea is that we use ultrasound for all the imaging and uh, everything in our body because it penetrates into the tissue much more than, uh, than, uh, uh, than light. So it goes like 10 centimeters, 15 centimeters to the, our body. So here you see <laughs> that uh, I didn't tell you. So here you have this attenuation on the nanometer scale. So how can you get to the centi centimeters if you, your, your ultrasound is attenuating already at the centimeter scale? But it turns out that this attenuation is very frequency dependent. So it depends what kind of frequency your ultrasound is. And I said, a wide range. What everything is about 20,000 is ultrasound. So you can, a nanometer, if you want to have an attenuation uh, at nanometer, you have to have some gigahertz. If you have uh, uh, attenuation at centimeter, you have to have megahertz. But to simulate megahertz using this, you need to have a large, large system. Okay. So this was, this is actually the basis of my PRC grant that uh, I had to mention at the beginning. Which is related to this ultrasound, uh, ultrasound guided drug delivery. Okay, I will not go into that. This is another project which is basically related to uh, using machine learning in studying effective dynamics. Actually, we did use an autoencoder and do that. So let me skip this. It's some, some project that we did with Petro Clasio. And I will conclude with uh, just this slide. Basically, I presented you all the methodology, methodology needed to simulate a virtual ultrasound machine using BPD. So I started from all atom, going through all these couplings of this uh, different coarse grain models, giving computational fluid dynamics, and now we are in a position to perform such simulation using this methodology. Uh, here I have to acknowledge that my teacher. These are my PhD student, uh, 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 so Stash was my first PhD student. I'm a physicist, I'm professor of physics, and she's a computational scientist. So we started uh, 
our configuration is such that we didn't know anything about physics. And then at the end, I, I, I taught him a few things. <laughs> so, uh, and then Julia is now assistant professor at the uh, Technical University of Munich. Yuri is actually now, he, he was in the University of Barcelona, but now he is at FTFL. Petra is a PhD student at the National Institute of Chemistry. Uh, Rudy uh, was actually, we collaborated uh, with him on this DNA stuff. With Luigi and Kurt, we developed a dress a long time ago. With Silver, we did the coupling to Martini. With Rafa, we, uh, we were collaborating on and developing uh, this open boundary MD. And with Petros, we did okay, many things as well. Uh, with Isaac Clark Gregory, uh, with the buckyball, but also this stuff I do. I give you time to go into that. And I think it's a real thing. We should take some questions. Very much, Matthew. So the, the time for questions now. I will start just a couple of questions from yes. the last generation. Uh, so just on this, uh, on the fact that this open boundary. So yeah. as you say, to impose a type of flow, let's say, of a yeah. boundary to physical vessel, can be more periodic, right? Yes. Yeah, I'm just wondering uh, whether the result depends on the system size. Because you are right that you don't impose a given force per atom. On the other hand, we need this experiment, which is uh, yeah. So basically, uh, we need this uh, buffer regions. They are truly rigid. They are not really. We need it to insert molecules into the system. This is their, this is their purpose. So, and our real system is actually this region of interest. And you see that we don't want this buffer region to be large. So it gives you an extra function that is not used by the real system. And now, depending, yeah, but uh, they have to be uh, big enough in order to that this uh, uh, game works. Now, depending on their size, you get you can get delay effect because actually the molecules may have to get from one part to the other, and uh, you can see that in our. Uh, but besides that, just let, let me rephrase. Yeah. So, if you impose shear flow, yeah, how can you be sure that you approach fixed state results? Even with the buffer, it's more compared to the macroscopic system. Yeah, uh, this is also done with the MD. You have uh, you have to check uh, different sizes and see if we clear, have, but uh, there's not equilibrium because exactly as you say. You okay, so in our case here, atom. what we can check is basically I didn't show you. You can check mass fluctuations of particles, and mass fluctuations of particles uh, you can compare to the if you are in equilibrium, you can compare to uh, Planck nominal uh, ensemble prediction. And it's by comparison you can see what the minimum size. It's the same uh, game that we played. Uh, basically, you have to check this, but this is uh, also for, uh, true for all the MD simulations. So basically, you, your system cannot be arbitrarily small. And uh, another one, if I can just now for the other day with implicit solvent, mm -hmm. can you go there? I'm just trying to understand why do you need the buffer? Here, you why do you need buffer? You need the buffer, you need the buffer uh, to get uh, to insert the molecules, the water molecules. Uh, actually, but which here, water? You don't have it's implicit water. Uh, uh, the, the real water, the real, the, when you go, so uh, yeah, okay, these are these uh, yeah, yeah. waters here. You have to insert the molecules. Ah, here. so you mean that bit for the, the water, so uh, you, you understand. So, this is. Uh, Instead of continu yeah, uh, continuous fluid dynamics, you have now implicit water. Yeah, but, but for water in principle, you can't you can't do the, the standard dynamics or Gibson standard. I mean, yeah, you basically for water here we didn't even use the post grain uh, water yeah. model. You can directly you insert. Can directly uh, insert. Put, yeah, but this is still a buffer. It is a buffer. Yeah, but it's not. Yeah, but you still have to. Uh, okay, so the difference is just that. Let me tell you what's the difference. Here. I mean, there are two things. One thing is this uh, uh, coarse grain uh, water model, which is needed here to insert. You don't need it for water. Okay, but the other thing is how to actually impose the boundary condition, which is via this force. 
external force. You see this yeah, external yeah. force there. So this external force is basically uh, basically uh, comes out of the fluxes changed. So the current is the direction of fluxes from both yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. here this is this external force that with 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 which with which you actually describe what you will do with the system. So you you do with the system what you will do with the system you will prescribe it through this external force. And this uh, buffer is still the, the 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 domain apart from what you show the, so if you don't have this uh, resolution exchange uh, resolution change basically from foreground to all atom if everything is just the same model all atom you still buffer you can call this region where you impose this external force. So this external force force is imposed only in that buffer region. Oh, okay, the external force is clear. It's just not, not clear to me what's the benefit for this specific problem. Which one? Here. For this one, yeah. Yeah, here is, this is the uh, the buffer region is where this uh, uh, external force is uh, imposed so that it has to consist of. So if you do the standard MD, you will have. Like, you start with the standard, or do you compare it? So there is no standard. Oh, so standard, but the standard MD will have. No, if you use on this, no logarithm. Oh, no, yeah, no, then you will not get uh, how, what, 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 I don't know. I don't what know if it's going to be a droplet. Effect? It's not going to be a droplet. Uh, well, uh, you need to have, uh, so we, with this external force, we actually impose this cylindrical shape of water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So if you don't, if you just put vacuum there, I don't know what will. Uh, Which properties they need affect? Uh, I didn't so. I, mean, I didn't say that you can have different uh, geometry. So yeah, yeah. grain, uh, so this cylindrical shape is just that you use as little impacted water as really needed. Okay. The idea is to use as little as you Yeah, of course. Uh, the, so the, we want to use here implicit as I told you so that we can have, yeah. uh, that we can uh, uh, add as many uh, ions as possible. I mean, so the idea is that if you have a physiological concentration. Yes. And uh, you, you have, a, if you want to have a physiological concentration a and a large number of ions, that means that you have even larger number of water molecules. So I, if I want to have a right statistic of ions, I want to have a large number of ions, but I don't want to have a large uh, number of water. So that's why uh, typically they're using this one molar concentration. Now in this case, we can use, uh, we don't have water there, but we can have a large number of ions. And have uh, also physiological concentration. That was the idea. That was the, the advantage. So that I can do very fast uh, DNA simulation Global using concentration. physiological con uh, concentration of DNA. Good. Of uh, source. Yeah. Right. Questions? Very much for the insightful presentation. I have some questions about uh, your open boundary molecular dynamics method. Uh, first of all, uh, which criteria do you have for the insertion of the molecules in the buffer region? For uh -huh, example, okay, so we, okay, I skipped a few technical details because otherwise, do you, be, yeah, do you have some? Uh, it's a, do you it's judge? A, it's, a Usher, it's an algorithm that uh, Rafa developed, Usher. Okay. And basically, uh, it's a gradient descent method uh, on the potential energy. So, so you, uh, you, uh, you ca calculate the interactions with uh, yeah, yeah. the more favorable interactions with the uh, with existing yeah, so molecules. It's like, an, it's like a standard all these insertion mm -hmm. uh, algorithms. Like, like the Widom methods, for yeah, example, or uh, something like that. Yeah. And uh, do you also have a criteria, for example, depending on the in homogeneities and densities? In order to, Here, to insert, actually, yes. to insert so, your, uh, your molecules. You will see because of this force in, in the buffer, the density is not homogeneous. Mm -hmm. the, the buffer, as I said, it's not our real part. So a buffer typically will go something like that. So it will, on the left, so on the outer, it will go down, then we'll have a large. Uh, like uh, here, so you might, and then yeah. go, and then at the domain with the region of interest, it will fit the right density. So it might, might have a flow due to the density yes, gradient. Yes, so we try exactly. So you can no flow you will not have, but you can. Uh, but you, you have some it could be a barrier and all this a stuff. Barrier. So we check this all this stuff. Yeah. So this is actually this artifact that you have. You cannot do 
In all these hybrid methods you, you have in this You hybrid, have some motion yeah, due to the uh, inhomogeneity in, uh, yeah, in density. Yeah, but uh, yeah. this external force is, this is actually the, you get this uh, profile because of this external force that takes care of that, but it doesn't happen. This is a stationary uh, profile that you get using this uh, uh, external force. So th th then, you, then you impose the external force in order to have the, uh, the flow, you mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. you can do also do that. Or shear, or ultrasound, or, or equilibrium. Okay. In equilibrium, you have to maintain the uh, Yes, yeah. yes, of course. But here, because mm -hmm. you don't have bound, periodic boundary condition, you have to do it yourself. I mean, yes. Uh, yeah. 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 And just due to the fact that you insert randomly molecules, so your system becomes a bit of hybrid uh, Monte Carlo and molecular it dynamics is. because it it's is. not yeah. exactly but these ideas deterministic. Were there. Yeah, so exactly. Mm -hmm. But uh, so, uh, as I said, this, uh, the, the, the algorithms for doing grand canonical MD were done in like that. It's just that uh, they were done for Leonard Jones liquids only. It was yeah. not that, uh, I'm not saying that we derived the first one, uh, this kind yes, of, we sure. just uh, using this adaptive resolution, we actually enable it to be generally adapt, uh, applicable for a more complex uh, system. So it works for water, it works for water, you don't even need this uh, uh, force grain solution because water is still a small molecule. But water is actually the upper limit that the standard uh, algorithm from before would work. So, but you will never ever do be able to do something like well, polymer by this is a problem without mm -hmm. uh, this force grain solution because you will never be able to insert. You cannot insert this guy, the, uh, the, the guy there into that. Okay. And you need to, if you want to have a fluctuating number. Sure. Yeah. And just another uh, another question about uh, your swinger algorithm that you yeah. used in order to uh, yeah, accurately yeah, represent yeah, the orientation yeah. of uh, water. It's just a really so good you thing. You, here are the distance. You, you you make a list. You make two lists, and you you add the na nearest neighbor to a certain molecule, and you make the. Okay. And you take into account the orientation of water uh, yeah, in order to represent. Uh, Basically, the beads no. or not? You, don't, you <laughs> yeah. don't need to, as I told you, this is taken care of by this phase two function. This phase two function is very significant thing. So, it starts, so technically, you always have this. Uh, uh, so you don't, you, uh, you don't. When I say that you you orient your molecule in the random way at the boundary, you, you don't even do that. You don't really delete these atomistic uh, particles. There because they are just moving. Uh, you always have these atomistic particles uh, everywhere. They just don't interact with the part. So they just go apart. So they don't cause the energy. And they have. Uh, they are there where they are. This uh, orientation is there like this. You can see it from the but it is what it is. And then the point is that if you had uh, your atomistic uh, interaction fully turned on. And this, you would have two neighboring molecules. They would just by accident be too too close to each other or overlapping. You will get explosions. And MD, this means that you will go. Uh, mm -hmm. Your your method will be numerically instable. Let me put it in a correct way. It would explode. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, now uh, uh, with this uh, weighting function, I did. I still need to mention. You need to also have a cap. Uh, uh, how do you say cap? Yeah, I don't forget cap. Cap forces. You need yep. cap means that you have some uh, prescribed really large force, which is uh, so good, so large that uh, in reality the, the molecule never come that close to the, to each other. That this Pauli principle or whatever you want to have. Mm -hmm. So it's cap, but cap is so that if you if you multiply a large number, which is not infinite, but it has mm -hmm. to be large with zero, you will get zero. That's the yes. idea. Mm -hmm. These are, so, are technical. Uh, okay. Yeah. And uh, uh, have you compared uh, how effective is uh, your Swinger algorithm with respect to the conformation of your DNA molecule in water? 
No, but, but this, by, uh, by, no, no, this by is, using this, is, this or not? You, this is so cheap that they, I don't even consider it. Oh. So basically, as I told you, in the, all these simulation, you can uh, redistribute these molecules every on every the latest update, which is typically uh, every thousand MB step. And uh, the real computational cost of the whole time step, mm -hmm. this represents 5% of the computational cost of the time step. So you do it every thousand steps, five percent. And and you found that uh, the conformation of the DNA molecule is accurately represented yeah, by yeah. So by this is what we always uh, okay. compare. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 No, this is the idea. It should mm -hmm. not affect uh, the way how you treat the solvent should not affect the biomolecule. That's the name of the game here. And here, when I say the buffer, as I say, in coarse grain model, mm -hmm. in the coarse grain part they can be, or in the hybrid part of the solvent, there can be some discrepancy. So in coarse grain, they are not, but the coarse grain part is still depends on what coarse grain model you use. If you have a bad coarse grain model, you would have a rubbish description of solvent there. But then it, yeah, but this is, uh, but uh, the point here is not this, you can give me a better one and I can repeat all this stuff. <laughs> That's the also idea, it's a general, it's not, uh, 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 coarse grain model dependent, that's what I say. So that's why I don't care about. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, what is really important here is that the atomistic part of your multi scale domain, in the atomistic part of the multi scale domain, which is also the part where the biomolecule is, everything is completely correct. There should not be anything wrong with the biomolecule or the solvent in the atomistic part, and it's not. That's what we check. The reference MK. The, no, to the, to it's test, not the reference. It, no, 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 no. The reference is the all atom uh, simulation atom. everywhere. So you have also solvent all atom everywhere. Yes. Yeah. This yeah and then you atom. compare it to this hybrid simulation yeah. and you compare the atomistic parts of your both uh, the atomistic part of uh, hybrid simulation with the part corresponding part in the all the atoms all uh, simulation. And they should be exactly the same. And this is what this is the real criterion for the multi scale. It's different than for the coarse graining. Because uh, one criterion is also you can check if uh, your multi scale simulation is correct on the coarse grain level all over. And this is also the case, but this is milder criterion as what I just said. Uh, hi, can I uh, also ask a question sure. uh, about the uh, adaptive resolution scheme? Um, I may have missed something because the audio wasn't the, the best. Can you explain what's going on with the, the hybrid uh, particle? The hybrid region is the coupling region. And the hybrid, uh, hybrid particles are actually hybrid between uh, all atom and, and a coarse grain. So this is an all atom um, a molecule plus the coarse grain side, which in this case is the center of mass side. I cannot see the cursor, sorry. Uh, you don't see what? Ah, now I can see, okay, yes. So this is actually the hybrid molecule. It's basically the all atom molecule plus the coarse grain molecule. Mm -hmm. So you have uh, both high resolution interaction sites plus the coarse grain side all together in one molecule. It's, yeah, it has a mixed uh, identity. But then you add up these forces, you see? So it's just that you add up atomistic and coarse grain forces. Okay, you, you weigh them, uh, you weigh them appropriately. appropriately. So basically, if you get to the atomistic region, you will get only a contribution from atomistic forces. If you get to the coarse grain region, you will get uh, only uh, the contribution of the coarse grain forces. And in between, you get some, some, uh, some interpolation. And basically this, uh, it's not, so, so basically it doesn't really matter how you add them, but uh, it was not just chosen in a random way. Uh, if you check what it means is actually that the weirdest, because uh, actually this, uh, this, uh, this uh, summation, it makes you, this is 
artificial, it's not derived from any uh, theory. But the idea is that the worst case scenario, if you, you can perform fully hybrid model uh, system. So you take a constant value of weighting function, let's say one half, and you can have hybrid molecules all over the box. This is another system completely. It's artificial system, but it can be possible. And you can go from 0.1 to 0.2. You just have a fully hybrid molecule system, okay? So they, they will interact with the, the molecules. They will interact with this uh, basically combination of coarse grain forces and atomistic forces. So these are not coarse grain models. These are not all atom models. These are hybrid models. This is completely mathematical concept. They are not existing yet. So what, uh, what it turns out is that uh, the, the, so it affects, for example, thermodynamic uh, properties. So such uh, interaction, this summation, the interactive, for example, value of pressure or something like that. And what it turns out is if you take the value one half, this one half there, which is right in the middle of the hybrid region, this is the most artificial setup. So basically this, uh, the underlying reason why we took this kind of combination is that you don't want, so in hybrid region, all these hybrid methods, there is no way that they, you do is the artificial to your system. And the point is that the weirdest situation is actually right in the middle, which is the farthest away from the atomistic and the coarse grain regions. So that's the, mm -hmm. this and is the best you can do, put it in this way. Uh, and, and may I ask, so um, how can you, um, this is kind of zooming in when, wherever you want those atomistic details. Yeah, uh, cool. What I'm showing here are the time stationary so situation, but you can change this uh, during the course of, of the simulation as well. The only condition would be, for example, you can have, uh, uh, let's say if you, if you, your macro molecule is moving now, it's uh, diffusing in the liquid. You are following this all atom region along the macro molecule, and of course this then uh, does certain changes in the solvent. But the condition is really that the this change sh should be much smaller than the diffusion constant of the solvent. So, for example macromolecules should move much slower than, uh, than water. Okay? So yeah, yeah. You can change uh, this weighting function, the value of, you can change this, uh, let's say now it goes, now this weighting function is such that the uh, left side of the box is uh, coarse grain and the uh, right side of the box is uh, all atom. Okay? Mm -hmm. But you can change as via time. You can mm -hmm. decide which part will be coarse grain, but you should not do it too fast. Yeah. You should do it uh, much slower than it's the dynamics of your solar. Okay, okay yeah. yeah. Uh, and one more thing that I might have also not uh, picked up uh, due to the audio, I, I'm just I'm just wondering the uh, about the polarity of the water molecule. The, when you coarse grain um, so a whole what? But uh, if, as I said, there are different ways of coarse graining. So these water molecules, they don't have any dipole moment. They don't have any charges. Uh, mm -hmm. What you have there is actually dielectric constant, for example, and then you have uh, some effective interactions, uh, which in our case was derived so that the center of mass uh, RDF is the same as you get one from uh, all atoms. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, the structure. Cool. Okay. Thanks a lot. Yeah, you're welcome. But you can then do that on, also on another way. Mm -hmm. get, uh, such a nice cool, thank you very much. It was a fascinating talk. Thanks. I thank you very much, Matei, for spending some time at the Cyprus Institute and for your talk today. It and was my real pleasure. I mean, yeah, it was very nice. I had a very nice discussion today.
Yesterday as well. Yeah. More extended than it was this time, but this time was really, the schedule was really tight. And yeah, this was a short note. I did. Yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, with all of us, yeah, we went, went. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you, everyone online. Thank you Bye -bye. for having me here. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.